Have any of you ever been accused, or perhaps know somebody, that no matter how busy they seem to be, they just can't be busy enough? Guilty. Four years ago, I had just graduated from UNLV School of Architecture. All while I was going to school for a bachelor's degree, I was working full time and raising two small children. By the time I finally graduated, I was recently divorced and had a brand new baby. So you would think at this juncture in my life, I would be ready to enjoy all of my free time. It just wasn't the case. Now that I was no longer going to school and having that outlet for creativity, I was really searching for something that would fill that void. I came across a nonprofit grant writing class, which I attended. It was at that nonprofit grant writing class that I would meet a young woman that would forever change my life, Rosalind Brooks. It was during this workshop that she would share with us that she had four acres of land donated to her and that she had envisioned creating Las Vegas' first community garden. After the workshop, I would approach her and let her know that I had a background in architecture and that I would love to help her create a master plan for the garden that would allow her to showcase her vision. The very next month, I attended the groundbreaking of what would become Vegas Roots Community Garden, where over 100 people came to volunteer to create those first community garden beds. Over the course of several months, we would uh, get together architects and landscape architects, artists and children, and the surrounding neighborhood to work to create what that master plan would become. Fast forward to the summer of that year. I go to work, and I'm told that along with 60% of my architecture firm that I work for, that I would be laid off. Now, I remember this day like it was yesterday. It was summertime, which means my two oldest children were at work with me. And as I was packing up my belongings that I'd accumulated working there over eight years and putting them in the car, I remember getting immediately on the phone and calling up anybody that I'd worked with over the last 15 years to let them know I would be starting my own business. You see, over the course of two years, I had watched families who were contractors, friends who were architects, interior designers, structural engineers, be laid off one by one. And I knew that if I were to be laid off, that my only option would be to start my own company. So I did. And I was lucky enough in the first couple of weeks to land two projects over the next year and a half, it would allow me to sustain myself and my three kids. Also during this time, I would continue to stay heavily involved in Vegas Roots Community Garden. Over those two years, I had watched people's lives literally change before my eyes, and I became an addict. I was now volunteering 20 to 30 hours a week while still running my own business. At the same time, I was watching really amazing projects pop up in Las Vegas during this recession. A brand new city hall, a museum that would celebrate Las Vegas history and culture, and a new performing arts center. Yet 65% of architects were laid off, and not one of these projects went to a local firm. And I was pissed off. <laughs> so much that I would find myself normally not such an outspoken person, standing up in the back of the room after public meetings and saying, why is this happening? So combining my newfound love for community projects, my love for architecture, and really wanting to do something about this, I realized that I really needed to find something to take action. Now to talk more about um, the things that I saw over the course of these two years, I want to share with you one story in particular that still really resonates with me today. We were given this young man named Cody to the garden through a program called Boys to Men. Now when he first came to the garden, he was very, very rough and tough. We were told that he had been involved in gangs. He was very standoffish when you would approach him. My kids were used to greeting people with hugs. He wanted nothing to do with it. But over time, you saw him start to change. He started finding joy in leading volunteer groups. 
And on one particular day, I came up to Cody and said, how are things going here? And his response uh, not only shocked me, but it stayed with me to this day. And he said, you know, for the first time in my life, I'm somewhere where I finally feel like I belong. And this is one of many, many stories. Knowing that I needed to find a new path and direction in my life, I started really uh, soul searching. In December of that year, I would come up with an idea that would allow me to take action. I got to work writing a business plan, a marketing plan, and I hit the streets literally talking to anybody who would give me the time of day, sharing my vision. I recruited seven young entrepreneur creative individuals to help me work through my vision, my marketing plans, my branding. In April of that year, we would have a grand opening for CoLab Las Vegas where over 200 people would be in attendance. I had RSVPs for 65. So when 200 people showed up, I was floored. And I knew that perhaps we were onto something. The very next month, we would launch an exhibit called Young Guns, where we gave the opportunity for seven young designers to showcase their talent and design and capabilities. And just one month after that, I would get a visit from the City of Las Vegas Cultures Affairs Department, who asked me if I would be willing to hire some of these young designers for a real public art project, the Neon Gateway. Now, we had hoped, perhaps, that we would make an impact where we would give young designers, designers, architects, landscape architects these opportunities, but never would we thought after just one exhibit that we would start to make an impact. But I told her, no, I won't hire some of these designers, but I will hire all seven of these young designers. And she said, well, Amy, if you can figure out financially how to make that work and you're crazy enough to get that much talent in one room, under one condition, adding one more artist, then go for it. Uh, so I was that crazy. And uh, we launched a five-day workshop where these young designers would come together um, and create this new public art project, which ended up being a really amazing experience. So this commission allowed us not only to commission these eight designers and give them income, but it allowed us to get a more permanent space in Art Square in the lovely downtown Las Vegas. So the organization took off faster than we could ever imagine. Uh, we were, like Alexia said, we were starting to really get a lot of press, and we seemed to be um, really embraced by the community. However, uh, my personal life was really taking a turn for the worse. You see, over the last three years, between getting divorced and being laid off, and starting a new business, we had downsized over and over again. And a lot of our belongings were in a one-car garage, which we never really went into. One day, we went in there to notice that we had a water heater leak that had been leaking over a long period of time, and that we had a severe mold problem. Severe black mold, known as Stachybotrys, that when inhaled by young children has known to be fatal. And I knew that it was a serious problem and that we needed to move out quickly. So we packed up our belongings that we had in the house, left those belongings that were ruined from the mold in the garage, and put them into storage unit. I began calling my family up, one by one, letting them know of our situation, and asking them if perhaps, for a short amount of time, if we could stay with them until we get back on our feet. And the answer was no. Over the course of a month and a half, we would move from place to place. It hadn't really sunk in the severity of my problem, as we were literally hosting these workshops for CoLab during all this, moving the organization forward, putting on our brightest face, until I realized I was running out of options. I think at that moment, I just thought to myself, where, where do I belong? Where's home to me? 
And so I called Rosalind Brooks with Vegas Roots Community Garden. I shared with her a situation. And shortly, she got back with me, and, and she said, you can stay here. The garden has residential units on the property, and you can stay here. So we packed up our things again, and we moved over to the garden where we stayed. And it allowed us, just for that moment, to have that big relief. Because just like Cody, for the first time in a really long time, I felt like I was home, that I, that I belonged. So over the couple years, I had watched other people's lives change. And it wasn't until I went through this experience that I internalized that more than anybody that I had watched their lives change, my lives probably had changed the most. And I think when you're involved in a project day to day, you don't realize the impact that, that it's having on you. Um, but what it did for me is that in moving CoLab forward, and as we are continuing to grow the, the programs, it's really allowed me to really have that strong belief system that when I'm doing these community projects, they're helping to create great environments for our city that we live in. I can stand up and say, this does work. You can build the community that you would like for your children and that you would like to see for yourself. So I stand up here looking at all of you. And if perhaps you're thinking, there's no culture in Las Vegas, we have no community here, then perhaps you can ask, how can you help to build community? How can I create the community that I would like to see for my children?